If you come check out the Microsoft Edge Insider page, you'll notice something on here. So we've known this is coming for a while, but Microsoft Edge is going to be coming to Linux. I don't really know when, it just says coming soon on here, but it'll be coming to Linux whenever soon is. Now the question is though, is there any reason to even care about this? Because on Linux we already have base Chromium and we have base Firefox, and obviously you also have all of the different browsers that are then based on those browsers. On my system I'm running Brave, Brave is pretty good, I would say it's the best Chrome browser, but some people like other ones. Now is there any reason to just add another Chrome based web browser? That's what we're going to be trying to answer today. And the way we're going to do that is by just testing it out on Windows. So what I can say is that using it on Windows, it is so much better than the older version of Edge. Like the older version of Edge was so much better than Internet Explorer. But is it better than what we already have on Linux or even just other browsers that are on Windows? Is it just better than Google Chrome? I wouldn't say that I like Google any more than I like Microsoft, so if that's something you care about, then there's not really much of a difference there for my part. But let's look at it as a browser that just isn't attached to Microsoft. Let's just compare it on the merits of the actual web browser. So, as you can see, it looks very, very similar to Chrome. It's, it's pretty much just Chrome with a Microsoft skin, as we can see. And obviously, because it's a Microsoft web browser, it will use Bing by default. Bing is still Bing, it's still bad, it's better than it was 10 years ago, but it's still Bing. Now, one thing I don't know how to do, I've tried to mess around with this for a bit, I might just be missing something really obvious. I have no idea how to actually change the search engine up here. I've looked through the settings menu, we can go look at that now. I don't know if there's even a way to change the search engine. I've tried like right clicking up here, it doesn't seem like you can do that. If we go to a new tab, you can't right click up here to change it either. If we right click on this, no, that won't change it. Maybe it's under the settings or something like that. Maybe it's under like appearance. No, that doesn't seem to be it. On startup, nope. New tab, n maybe customize this. No, that's just customizing the layout of the new tab. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's a way to change the search engine, which already is a big enough reason for me to not recommend this web browser to anyone just because most people are going to be using Google and you probably want to switch to Google or even if you want to use DuckDuckGo I don't know if there's a way to do that right now I literally haven't found a way to change the search engine and then we can go to the next problem so if we just go to the Chrome Web Store you can actually download extensions for Edge there's a little bit of a problem though Unlike literally every single other Chrome browser that exists out there, let's try to add a theme to it. Okay, an error has occurred. What's this error? Themes are not supported in Microsoft Edge. So at this stage, you can't theme the web browser. What year is this? Why can I not theme the web browser? Every single other Chrome browser I can do that, and that's... And that's partially why the Chrome Web Store is actually disabled on Microsoft Edge by default. So the way you're supposed to install extensions is go to like the Microsoft Edge Extension Store. So Microsoft Edge Add-ons or Microsoft Edge Add-ons Store, whatever it's called. And there's a lot of stuff in here. It's just a really poorly laid out website though. So if we look at this, there's just like a bunch of stuff on here. Obviously, there's a bunch of stuff that you might care about. Let's see if stuff that I actually use is on here. Is LastPass on here? Let's see. LastPass is on here. Is it a legit LastPass? I would assume that it is. It. I wouldn't imagine Microsoft would let something like this sit on here, but I'm not too sure. What about other extensions that I use, like say, Honey? Is that on here? Yep, that seems to be on here as well. Okay. And you can see how many ratings it's getting, and this partially tells you how many people are actually using this web browser. So, it seems like you can install extensions just fine from here. Can we install the same extension from the Chrome Web Store though? That is a question. I haven't tried that. So, Chrome Web Store, LastPass. Will that work or will it complain that it's not a supported extension? I actually haven't tried this, so I'm going to assume it will work, but I can't be too sure. Add to Chrome. Will this work? Add extension. It seems like it's doing something. Whether it's doing something good is another question. It seems to be downloading it. Okay, it's downloading it, so I'll cut back to when that's actually done. Okay, it seems like LastPass was successfully added. Whether it works all of the time, I haven't tested, but it seems like you can at least get it installed, which is good. 
I'm going to assume, considering the fact that themes don't work, there's probably a bunch of extensions that don't work as well. But judging from this very, very small test set, these ones seem to work. Now, there's probably an extension to change your actual search engine, but as I said, I don't think there's a way for you to do it as the user. Apart from that though, it seems to have a lot of the other basic stuff that a web browser has. So you can do things like go to your favorites, history, downloads. There's this apps page in here, which I'm not sure what this does. Install this site as an app. Let's, so let's go to a website. Like let's say go to YouTube and see what that actually is. I think that's sort of like bookmarking it, but I'm, it has to be different if they're going to have a separate thing there. So let's install this site as an app. What does that mean? Does that do it? Install the site as an app. Does that do anything? Does that button not work? Does it depend on the specific website I'm using? Manage apps. Uh, it worked on that Bing page though. So let's just go back to Bing. We'll search Bing and Bing and see if we can add this page as an app or whatever it is. So if we go, okay, now it's letting me do something. Install this app. Okay, install it. Right. Manage apps. What, okay, is this, what is this? Oh, it'll let you, what? Is this some weird Microsoft uh, Universal Windows platform nonsense? What is, what is this? It's just created like this dedicated window just for Bing. What is the point of this? Does it sandbox it or something? This, this doesn't make sense as a feature. I'm honestly not sure what the point of this. This seems like, just a bookmark. I have literally no idea why anyone would ever use this feature. This seems really weird. But as I was saying before, a lot of the other stuff is pretty much just Chrome stuff. We have, what's this collections thing? Is start a new collection, collect and organize web pages you browse. So bookmarks. Wait, is that different from bookmarks or is, have they changed bookmarks to be collections? Add current page. Okay, no, they've just changed the name of bookmarks to be collections for whatever reason. What? Why? Wh wait, what? What's the point of doing that? And the other thing they did is they changed private windows to be called in private windows. So I guess they could call it in private browsing, which is a funny joke. But why did you change it from being private browsing like literally every other web browser does? This seems like just a really weird design decision because it's just going to confuse people. One thing that is neat though that I did notice is that you actually have this um, text-to-speech thing here which I'm never going to use myself but if you have like trouble reading or just any reason why you want to have text-to-speech it seems like this... You're almost done. Can you hear that? You should be able Next, to. Next, click the last pass browser button above to create your account or login. I don't know Add if... to browser login. Oh. Okay, I don't know if you heard that well enough, but it just basically read out the web page. So you have a basically a screen reader built into the actual web browser, which I think is pretty cool. So you can change the speed of it. You can change the voice, I guess. So if you want to have it read in like, I don't know, Japanese. Let's try that again. Next. <laughs> Click the last pass browser button above to create your account or login. Add to browser login. That's more fun than I expected, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> it doesn't try to translate it. If you choose a voice in a separate language, it'll just try to read that text in that language. I'm never going to use that, but it is nice for people that have trouble reading or have trouble just seeing in general, that there is a text-to-speech option actually built into the web browser. I don't know of any other web browsers that actually do that. Obviously, a lot of these people will use external applications to do this, or they'll use a third-party plugin, but I guess it's kind of neat that that's actually built into that. It's not something I'll use, as I said, but it is neat. So, yeah, these collections here, as I was saying before, they seem to just be... Microsoft trying to change bookmarks for some reason. Another thing we have in here... Wait, no, we still have favorites. Okay, now I'm very confused. What's the difference between a favorite and a collection then? Because you can still do folders of favorites. Is this just another way to do favorites? Is there just two ways to do favorites built into this web browser? 
You also have, um, this is just a basic Chrome thing. You have a way to like sync your stuff between devices. I don't ever use this because I don't feel the need to ever sync my, uh, my data between my phone and my computer, but hey, there's profiles in here as well. I don't know if the older version of Chrome had that, but yeah, it's here now if you ever use that. Apart from that though, the only other thing that's worth mentioning is that being a Chromium based web browser, you get the Chrome DevTools, which is lovely because the Chrome DevTools are pretty good. I don't really have a strong opinion on these over the Firefox ones. I would say they're both pretty good. There's nothing that these do that are different from just the basic Chrome tools. You can do pretty much everything that was possible with those. Yeah, it says there's some things here, but all of this stuff from what I know, you can already do with Chromium. So I think that's pretty much gonna sum up everything I'm saying about this. It's basically just Chromium. If you're on a system that has the older version of Microsoft Edge, I would say that this version is just way better. But for anyone else, I don't really see the point of actually going out of your way to actually install this web browser. There are so many others out there, even just Google Chrome, that are just better, even if for nothing else, they support theming. So my entire opinion on this web browser is basically the fact that this is just really underwhelming. There's nothing that it does that makes it stand out. Brave has its tokens. Vivaldi has its really good customizability. Basic Chrome is just a Google application. So if you like Google, there's, there's that there. This really is just Chromium with features stripped out and text to speech added, and also three different ways to do bookmarks, which isn't really enough to sell me on it. So when this comes to Linux, I'll probably try it out again, but I don't really have a video idea to talk about when it does do that because it's probably gonna be just as underwhelming as it is right now. So before I end the video, I just wanna thank my patrons. A special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Tiki, Andrew Rowe, Tony, Yoki, Larry, Ray, and Zilva. This is getting a little bit ridiculous at this point. I might have to strip it down if I get any more patrons. So we'll see what happens there. But if you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, so be sure to check that out, as well as my Amazon affiliate links. If you don't want to support the channel through Patreon, but you still want to support the channel any other way, you can buy literally anything you want on Amazon, just use my links, and then I will get a bit of a kickback for that. Also, remember to check out my podcast, Tech Over Tea. I believe episode 10 will be out by now, so go check that one out. I think that was a really fun one to record. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.